Right, time for another draft science video presentation, uh, comments and such. So first we'll start with a little bit of Google is evil stuff. Um, all the features that don't exist anymore. So Google has made, you know, once Google bought YouTube, it slowly but surely just took away features. Uh, being able to search comments, response videos, categorization of the content in some rational and disciplined way. Um, you know, lots of things that um, made the user um, smarter. Uh, things they could do now that would be so easy to do. They could, um, they could give you like the plus and minuses on a video and they could uh, tell you, um, you know, give you, give you the results based on um, accounts that are a year old at least. Okay, <laughs> so, you, you know, they could eliminate the, the troll accounts, you know, they could tell us, you know, accounts that actually have a subscriber or some other kind of thing, some other limitation on, you know, what we see, um, and see what the voting would be like based on what people that actually use YouTube in a functional way for the purpose of watching videos, rather than attempting to censor videos and degrade videos and ruin videos. Um, yeah, but they don't give us those features. Um, they don't give us any way to glean um, the people who are cheating from the people who just want to play a, a game where, yes, I'll make videos, you make videos, I'll make original content, you should make original content, you shouldn't just steal other people's stuff and quote mine it and distort it and pervert it, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, all those features could exist. In my opinion, they would exist if there was a competitor you know, uh, some company that actually had the bucks to play in Google's ballpark, we'd probably have those features. But we don't have them because there's no competitors forcing it, um, and because Google is plainly just evil. Um, they don't want uh, a rational medium. They want an irrational one because, again, they make money on the noise. Your misdirection is, you know, exactly what they want. They want you to watch things you didn't intend to watch. They want you to do lots of, they want you to make lots of mistakes. Um, and they want you to be reactionary. The more reactionary, the better. They want the noise. They want the blood. They want the mess because they make money. They, they, they get to clean it up, the mess. They get to, you know, drive the ambulance and get paid and they get to do all kinds of things that, you know, they make money on mess, on error. And again, make sure they make money on stupidity more than anything else. Suckers who are persuaded by fucking lizards, um, that's what they're looking for. The talking kitty, you know, told me to buy it. <laughs> you know, those are the people Google cares about. Um, anybody a little smarter than that, you're off the radar. You don't mean anything. Uh, they can't make any money off of you. Um, anyway, so uh, Baldy Cats, um, again, is simple request. Um, in the comments, AB Science makes some raggy comment, you know, and he's, he's a part of that club. Um, so instead of doing what I requested, which is just provide me a physics professor, any kind of qualified, just anybody, it doesn't matter who's making the video, show me somebody describing it accurately. Describing accurately what the pattern looks like, describing accurately what the mass says, and describing accurately um, a mechanism, uh, and drawing the drawing the mechanism even. Show me how waves did it. Okay, how two waves create the double slit pattern, <laughs> because it, they can't. Uh, plain fact. Um, so anyway, uh, but they won't do it. I mean, Baldy Cat's name is out of the video as soon as you produce, okay, as soon as he produces a, gl a glimmer of evidence that he has some right to say I'm full of shite or um, that what I'm talking is garbage and uh, junk and pseudoscience and nonsense. He made lots of accusations. Well, let him back one of them up with a piece of evidence, just one fucking piece of evidence. You don't even have to make the evidence. He doesn't even have to make the argument. He just has to show me the argument being made. And he doesn't have the balls to do it? I mean, jeez. It's pathetic. 
All right. So, uh, on to the other assholes. So, some guy on a Quinn Wheeler video. Everything is pressure mediation, though. Well, yes, I've said the only thing that, you know, Ken Wheeler has only said maybe three things in his life that are true. And in arguing that physics is about mediating pressure, okay, and I would argue the force is what's applying the pressure, yes, that's exactly what moves matter. Matter is moved by changing the pressure around it. You change the pressure around an electron, it goes somewhere where there's less pressure. Everything's just pushed plain and simple and if you want to make the push really work then you take away the push going the opposite way and the push becomes really powerful so it's just push and no push those are the two things in the universe period the end you're done doing elemental physics all right, the right hand rule is also quite informative. Yes, of course it is. Yes, yes. But Ken really has no clue what that fucking thing means. So I don't exactly know the context of your statement, but he has nothing to say about that that means anything to anybody rational. So, um, whatever. Uh, Zohar. Uh, love the video. I'm actually in the middle of making a video about this for my channel. Well, I'm just saying, okay, you can try to rephrase me if you wish to do that. Um, uh, but, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you've got to do it kind of well, frankly, because I say it pretty clearly. But whatever. Fine. All right, the retard, uh, formerly known as Piro, uh, <laughs> or whatever. I watch the ones I comment on, and many I don't. Yes, exactly. So you really don't care about the context, and I don't think you watch the videos you comment on, frankly. Um, <laughs> you don't. You listen in the background. You're doing something else. You don't pay much attention. Your your attention to detail has always been pathetic, and it continues to be so. Um, if you want to have a science discussion, I'll do it on Discord. I'm totally uninterested. First, I can't draw in Discord. And um, so I just don't play Discord. Whatever this Discord thing is, everybody thinks is the place to be. I don't see it, okay? I personally don't see it. I don't see anybody on Discord worth listening to. Now, if you can tell me there's somebody on Discord worth listening to, okay. But who are you going to tell me? You? Who else is on Discord? Who else is that's the platform? I don't buy any of this crap, okay? He says... I don't use Skype anymore. It's fucking free. It has a great frame rate, and you don't want to use it. Fine. I don't. I think you can use it. You just are playing some whatever the game is. Okay. Maybe you're invested in Discord. You have Discord stock or something. Doesn't make any sense, frankly. I've already spent a lot of time explaining there are no two wave. Uh, waves created. Well, why do they draw it that way? That would be the first question. Second question, how can you have wave interference without waves to interfere with each other? Uh, why does the math have two point sources? That's what the distance is, idiot, okay? It's a sine theta. A, the sine theta changes, but the points from which the sine theta is generated doesn't change. It's always the same distance. In the single slit, they use A for that. It's not some qualified A. It's A. It's the distance. It's the two surfaces. So your wave centers have to be the surfaces of the slit. That's what the math says. I'll say that again. The math explicitly says the two point sources for the changes in sine theta are the surfaces. It's explicitly, directly, completely in the math. So you're telling me they don't know how to do their math, is what you're saying. Huygens says the math is wrong. There's no Huygens math. This is just fallacy. It's just something you're making up. It's complete nonsense. There's no Huygens math. Oh, so stupid. Uh, the principle says the wavefront is like tons 
and tons of little waves. This is just such baby talk, tons and tons. No, what the physics says, if you're going to believe in Huygens, you have to believe in an infinite number because that's the only way your waves can stay consistent. Your waves become misshapen and distorted if you, if you don't use anything other than an infinite number. So you have to create an infinite number of these little point sources. And again, even if you did, it doesn't. It isn't in the math. The infinite number of waves isn't in any math anywhere, and it doesn't change anything. The fact is, the two point sources are the surfaces. That's the math that works. That's the only dimension that works. You can't do it any other way. Any other way always leaves you the two surfaces as the part that matters. So why are you keep asserting something that's just patently untrue? Okay. Um, again, you know, and even with sound, right? So, so he, he he uses a distorted view of water waves in a single slit. Like if you put agitated waves in, you can get a pattern. Do the experiment with sound. If I take sound and I put one hole and I shoot the sound through the one hole, do you get an interference pattern? No. So how come it doesn't work? The same principle. It's Huygens, isn't it? Isn't Huygens' principle work for sound also? It's Huygens for all wave functions, correct? So why doesn't it work with sound? Oh, just pathetic. I've seen you describe <clears throat> before where the two waves thing come from. Yeah, it comes from a mathematical approximation. It doesn't matter. It's point sources, and they're in a specific place in the math, and you can't deny it. The center of the waves that are supposed to be interfering with each other are in two points, point A and point B. And those two points are a distance away from us, from, from each other, and that's the fucking variable in the fucking math. Uh, where most of the signal and most of the wave front cancels out. So this cancel out argument is complete nonsense just as many little points cancel out as double uh, double down. So just as many create constructive as destructive. So you can't use some notion of canceling out. It doesn't explain anything. It's not a legitimate pile of crap. <laughs> it's nonsense. You're, you're just so overtly cheating and you won't admit it. And that's all that's happening here. Um, and you can approximate the real pattern. So there's more nonsense about approximating anything. Why, you don't need to approximate anything. The math isn't approximating. The distance between the two surfaces is a real distance. It's in the math. There's no approximation. Okay. Um, uh, with the calculation from the edges of the slit. So again, again this is just baby. There's nothing. This is drivel. The fact is, the centers, the point sources that you're changing the angle from are always in the same place, and they're on the surfaces. If you were to draw it, the two waves have to be oriented on the surfaces, which waves don't do. Okay, it's still one wave, so this is more nonsense. <laughs> one wave interferes with itself. Oh, please. This is just baby talk. Okay, wave front, and there are no two waves created. So somehow you have interference with one wave, not from two sources. Clearly the argument is the whole reason the distance is in the math is to have two different sources of angles. I mean, you, you, I mean, if this is just too obvious and he's just playing this silly word game. I mean, the math says sine theta here sine theta here, sine theta here, sine theta here. The math says sine theta here, sine theta here, sine theta here, sine theta here. These two points never change. These two points are always the same two points in every single iteration of the pattern. These two points never change. It's never sine theta from here or sine theta from here. No, 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 no. There's only two waves and there, one of them has to be here, point source. One of them center, the wave center has to be here, and the other one has to be here. That is half over the surface, half in the opening. That's where they have to be to draw any kind of rational diagram of the 
interference lines, the interference points. You can't have interference without doing that mechanically, graphically, in the real world. So quit playing a game that the truth is otherwise. That's the truth of your math. Why are you lying to protect it? <laughs> you know, why are you lying about it? And you're lying. You're just overtly lying now. Um, because there's just no doubt about the fact that the distance never changes. The A variable is not modified in the math. The point sources are always the same point sources. All right. Uh, so, yes, there won't be a conversation with Piero. There will be no point anyway. It'd be just a waste of time because <laughs> you can't answer questions. Um, and again, what, what would the argument be? What, you think I'm an idiot? I can't sit there and look at a stupid formula, uh, you know, where it simply says uh, wavelength divided by distance. Yeah, that's what it is. There's nothing else in there. There's no Huygens factor. Okay. Your theory seems to suggest at 6.38 that force is actually a kind of fundamental particle. Wow, you picked that up. It doesn't suggest it, it asserts it overtly. I love the word force. I love the word force bit. A bit of force. Yes, explicitly stated. Apologies if I've misunderstood. I don't know what game you're playing, blah, blah, blah. Duh. Anyway. In <laughs> Newtonian physics, who cares about your playing these games with what Newton, as if Newton physics is junk physics. No, Newton physics is actually insanely reliable and good physics. It's just not complete. It didn't have electrons and protons in it. It didn't have a lot of little subtleties. But guess what? Nothing that Newton actually said as a mathematical concept was in fact in any way wrong. It was all correct. It just wasn't as detailed as it could have been. Uh, equals mass times acceleration. Well, that's right. It, it doesn't mean frequency. Okay, that's your new modern horseshit. <laughs> okay, are you simply restating Newton? I, I mean, this is just so fucking stupid. You're restating Newton if you believe in momentum. So if you believe there's a thing called momentum and that it's made out of mass and acceleration, you therefore are just doing something old and stupid. It's completely unnecessary for a modern physics to have any idea of what momentum is. Oh, fuck you. You are just being such a fucking cunt. Uh, are you simply restating Newton? So did Newton say that uh, electrons are moved by little force bits? I guess I'm not restating Newton, retard, because Newton didn't know there was electrons, re-fucking-tard. Oh, God, what an obnoxious asshole. Or do you have a new understanding of force? Well, I've explicitly stated it. Seems pretty different, doesn't it? Have you ever, were you taught in grammar school that there's little bits of force and that the bits of force at a frequency are a photon and the bits of force uh, segregated uh, based on electron force and proton force is what causes magnetism? Do, is anybody else making those arguments? No. Oh, should, should you redefine you force um, bit as a new entity. Well, I guess calling it a force bit, I've already established its existence as an entity. I mean, this really is. What what kind of insincerity is at the depth of this horse shit? Who the fuck are you and what is this garbage you're typing? Okay, as it may cause confusion only to a complete imbecile. What's so fucking confusing? Force bit, matter bit. Force bit, very, very small. I mean, what's fucking confusing, idiot? <laughs> force bits move speed of light. Matter bits move where the force tells them to. Gee, that was so fucking confusing. I don't know how I could keep that straight. So you can't really do 2 plus 2 either, right? Because too many things moving, too much going on. Um, do your force bits in themselves exert forces? No, asshole. I mean, <laughs> how can I make it any clearer? They're, they are forced. They are, there is no force without them, fuckhead. 
There's no photon without the quanta that make the photon, fuckhead. And are those forces particles as well? Oh, shit. That would not make sense. Well, it doesn't make sense that you're walking uh, free on Earth because you're really, really, really fucking too stupid. And what, you can't tell the difference between sidewalk and yellow line in the middle of the road? Are you that fucking stupid? Shit. <laughs> wow. Amazingly stupid. I mean, really, come on, this, this notion that you people can't follow along, I mean, fuck. Two plus two plus two physics. Two kinds of force, two kinds of matter, electrons, protons, right, plus minus, the same thing with the force, plus minus, and two kinds of interactions, straight and perpendicular. You can't follow along. I meant, what excludes the photon from having width? Where did I say it's excluded? If I, you know, I showed you a fucking envelope. Okay, it's like an envelope. Does the envelope have no width, asshole? The point is, is the width, obviously, is very, very small compared to the fucking goddamn length this way. Very, very. See how this is very, very thin? And this is very, very long? So yes, the little bits are a little bit out of alignment. And as I pointed out, they're little bits. This is just a representation of little bits of energy, okay? That would be here, 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 here. And if I drew a box around them, right? It's mostly empty space, fuckhead. Do I have to say that to you? That this is a representation and most of it will be empty space and there will just be a little dot here and a little dot here and a little dot here and a little dot here. But this is the container for the whole fucking photon. So it's really thin, but it's really fat this way and it can be long or short. It can be any kind of length. There. You can't follow the fuck along. God fucking damn. From having width again. So where did I say it can't have width? It's really small. The quanta of force is really small when it already has height and depth. So again, you're just, you can't understand it all. You can't follow the fuck along on a really simple argument. If I fire a gun from here, boom, I fired it. There's a bullet in space. You understand that, right? I move the gun down a little bit. I fire the bullet again, right? One second later, boom, there's a bullet in space. I move the gun down a little bit. I fire the bullet. Boom. There's a bullet in space. You do understand that the bullets are in different places in space, and they're a little bit separated in a distance, you know, up and down. You can understand that, right? But most of the space, that if I was to draw a box around those three bullets, the box would be really, really big. Mostly empty space. And the little bullets would be in certain locations, right? Now, is that too complicated? You can't, you realistically, realistically, you can't follow along. You can't figure it out for yourself. You have to ask these inane and silly questions. All right. Don't you want to put the $1,500, I don't know, I've written wrong, uh, physicist uh, prize pool in the title rather than, <clears throat> or alongside the two current permit tags? I will uh, periodically inform people that there is a prize being offered. That's about all I can do. I can send emails to physicists that might be interested. That's all I can do. The rest is sort of whether YouTube viral something and all this other crap. It doesn't really have anything to do with me. All right, but right now Google's evil is important because I have a strike on this account because Google's evil. Uh, Baldy Katz is a scum and should be taught a lesson, so he's in the title. And maybe in the future, I'll replace the title with and $1,500 for free. And one hour of your time. Um, but yeah, I do plan on promoting it and, and you know, trying to do, trying to get some physicists to take me up on my free money offer for them to defend their solid thing. Their thing is so supposed to be so solid and so indestructible and we've proven everything. Well, if they've done all of that, they shouldn't be afraid of an hour conversation with some flat earth-like retard, should they? They should be grabbing the fucking money. I would be grabbing it. <laughs> you know, if it was going to be that easy, yeah, but it's not going to be that easy. 
God, I really... You know, people talk like, you know, I'm interested in, in, you know, these are my fans and they're all gullible. Do you see me interested at all in people? Because, you know, because, yeah, this is, this is, these are people who are on my side and they can't get it right. Do I see, does it look like I have any interest in subscribers or any of that crap? No, I have an interest in arguments. <sighs> anyway, but when they tell me, well, you didn't arrange the ABC blocks in perfectly straight alignment, so I couldn't understand ABC. <sighs> I'm sorry, but you people are just showing. I mean, people are too stupid to do physics. You're way too stupid. <laughs> I think I actually understand your description of the behavior of light itself. Oh, it's just not that really bullets at a frequency. Gee, that's, you know, you, you think you finally got it, huh? Anyway, but when it comes to the double slit experiment, I figure that all that apparatus, what all that apparatus? It's a laser beam, two slits, and a, a display screen. What's all the apparatus? I mean, it kind of does matter how close the laser is. You know, this is an issue, you know, that does change things a little bit. But you sort of have to understand that, see, at a distance, if you have the laser beam far away from the slits, okay, the idea is is this light has to be a lot more parallel, right, to get through the slits. I mean, light going over here can't get through the slits. So it ends up being a lot more parallel. And so if I have the laser beam too close, what I'm actually doing, you know, in some sense, is I'm guaranteeing that some of the light's doing this and some of the light's doing this. I'm actually forcing it to spread more because the light that's going perfectly parallel is getting blocked by the center now. And so all I'm getting is light that actually is leaving the laser at an angle. And so it will create a, a distorted uh, image on the target. Oh, sorry, my bad. So, sorry to Piro that I didn't show you the, <laughs> the simple drawing, but anyway, you get the message. I can't go back and fix it, so <laughs> I'm not redoing it, so sorry. My bad. But you can sort of see at a distance, it's all parallel going through. closer you get, the more you're obliging it to spread. All right, so there's not much apparatus, but yes, there is a little bit of apparatus. In between the emitter and the detector screen, slits, polarity filters, crystals. That's not the two slit experiments. So why are we talking about that? That has to do with the entanglement crap. And those experiments are, yes, bullshit. Because they think they're measuring some spin quality when they're clearly just measuring polarization. Is probably critical to the result at the end. Well, it's really not that critical. Basic principles are fairly simple to grasp, but then I hear you talk about how many atoms deep light travels into a mirror before bouncing back out, and I realize that I don't know jack shit about the detailed physics. Well, again, you really don't need to know that much about it because it's, it really is just bouncing ball, you know? It really is. Once you figure out, okay, the ball sticks... All right, and then another ball hits, and both balls bounce off, and the thing stops, and then another one sticks, and it moves in that direction. And then, oh, that's not that hard. Come on, you can do it. Of all those various materials that light is interacting with and how they might uh, affect what we see on the screen. So again, you're just making something really simple, really complicated, and it ain't that complicated. There's two point sources. The only light that's getting diffracted, the only light that spreads to make the pattern, is light that traveled next to the surface. As the rest of the light went straight through. So it's a tiny fraction of the photons that are broken and disturbed by the slits and that remanufacture at the locations. The majority of the light goes straight through. Now, obviously, in the two-slit experiment, the majority of the light doesn't go through at all because it hits the middle impediment. <laughs> okay. I realize that, okay, blah, 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 blah. I'm old enough to have been burned many, many times by thinking I had something I, I all figured out only to be completely embarrassed and humbled by the tiny details I didn't consider. Yes, I've had that happen to me many times in the last 10 years. I thought I had a eureka moment and it fell apart. Um, but the truth is, is that 
this is the only process there is and some of those eureka moments are going to be real eureka moments and <laughs> there's no way to guarantee it there's no way to know the difference between the two until yes you've really tested them and you have to test them with time and so some of this stuff has been tested by 10 years of work and now it's pretty reliable uh, so for now I am just trying to listen and only ask questions about things I I better understand because I'm sure you'll agree that ignorance of tiny but critical details is how the woo gets in and takes hold in the first place. No, that's not how I. Again, this is like religion. It's so clear. Okay, it's like the Veritasium example. I mean, I didn't realize it. But you say to yourself, the obvious defect is why does he have the sensitivity turned all the way up? I mean, seven or eight photons a second, as error photons, is cranking it all the way up. I mean, that's as, that's as, you have the amplifier all the way up, okay? And you say to yourself, he knows he has the amplifier all the way up. He knows it didn't work with it at a normal setting, and that's the real truth. But he didn't tell anybody that. He didn't say to them, look, I tried to get this experiment to work without tinkering the fuck out of it. But yeah, I had to tinker the fuck out of it. Okay, I had to fuck up this experiment to make it work. So it's that kind of dishonesty that's the, at the root of this. They want this to be the truth. It doesn't have anything to do with anything other than they want it. And they want it partly because they've invested a hunk of their life in horse shit and they don't want to be embarrassed that, oh shit, I fell for a, a joke, you know. I fell for the fake, the phony. Um, and that's just going to be embarrassing. No, and that's the truth. So they're trying to evade embarrassment. That's what it comes down to. I mean, you really were duped. I'm sorry. I didn't fall for it when I was a kid. I knew as a as a fucking kid, I knew they were talking shit. Is it? It sounds just like shit would sound like bent space, uh, double helix wavetons flying in straight line rays through space. What the fuck are you talking about? Snakes can't even do what they are doing, right? Complex organisms with complex brains aren't even as uh, as as agile and as as and, and as as fancy as this fucking thing they say is the element of the universe. I mean, if somebody actually told you literally, there's little jellyfish in the universe, little tiny, tiny, tiny ones, and that they're waving in ocean water, and that is the universe. You'd say, oh fuck that. What do they eat? You know, you'd figure out it doesn't make any fucking sense. But you guys didn't. Anyway, thanks again for the uh, nearly comprehensive start here video. Really, neatly comprehensive. Um, <clears throat> there were little things I didn't catch before that helped answer a few of the questions I had. Yes, well, I'm just saying it. I didn't have these answers before. Okay, so I you know, realized I was making gravity more complicated than it is. All I need to do is absorb energy. And obviously when matter is moving, if force is moving it, then it's absorbing the force while it's moving, unless it moves the speed of light. And we know the matter doesn't move the speed of light, so it's obviously eating some energy. Every time matter moves, a little piece of energy dies. All right, thanks for the video. Uh, this is brilliant. We did all that. So here's the AB side. So uh, Ujima Flipper, who's now called some kind of weird thing, whatever this is, Abaganationalist Express. <laughs> she chooses some really great screen names. Anyway, uh, this is brilliant stuff, really explained, logical, consistent. And then this AB science guy types this tripe. And so bad, I can't even be described as wrong. So again, it's so wrong, right? It's so wrong that it's like, you got to have a different word for it. It's so wrong. And yet they can't explain the wrong. They can't provide me the link to the video of the right. Um, they can't do a damn thing but say, you're wrong. I mean, isn't this just people saying, God is God? Uh, I believe uh, you're a, you're a sinner. <laughs> you know, you suck because you don't believe. I mean, it's just shit. So I said, too bad on you <clears throat> that you back 
up these bold words with nothing. You are just helping prove the point that your science is just another faith religion. Clearly, they can't make an argument to save anything. They can't. They, I'm just sitting here saying, make your argument. Well, where's your fucking argument? I don't see it anywhere. Show me. Point me to your leader, okay, and have him make a speech. Show me your popey video of the truth. All right, show me your suskind explaining the double slit experiment that has something to do with the real evidence. Okay, show me a, a professor explaining the experiment where it has some connection to an actual real experiment that was actually done. And then you could show me where the Eddington experiment was repeated successfully with great technology. Okay, and yet you're the one who says my evidence is evident. It, <coughs> my evidence is existence itself. I've never said that. So what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? I've never said any such thing. I've said my evidence is the experiments, the actual ones that are actually done. Okay. So where have I not cited experiments? Where have I not displayed experiments? Where have I not diagrammed experiments? It's in every one of my fucking videos, you fucking liar. I mean, amazing lies. My evidence is existence itself. Again, he quotes that. I've never said that. You know, beyond pointing out that, yes, the existence of the experiments. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine this context where I ever said that. But whatever. Um, so, and again, it's clear. I'm describing the experiments. Where have I cheated on the description of gravity? We know what it is. It's movement at a specific acceleration. Where have I denied that truth? Where am I not explaining where the acceleration comes from? I mean, you're just so pathetic. This is, so that's the best you got as a counter argument. So when Suskind, Leonard Suskind cites detector experiments that were never done, you think they actually were done. You think somebody actually detected an electron, you know, or Feynman or whoever you want to pick. You think that actually happened in some lab somewhere where they shot a photon at an electron and the photon bounced off the electron and then they knew where the electron was. When, of course, the photon is this big in its polarization, and the electron is a million times smaller than that polarization. It's actually a billion times smaller than that polarization. So somehow you hit one electron with a whole photon, the whole photon bounced off of it. Even though the photon is a trillion times bigger <laughs> yeah, than the electron. Anyway, the photon is a composite object. Clearly, the little bits inside the photon are a million times smaller than the electron. But a photon is not one particle. Oh, you people are just so fucking dishonest and so full of shit. Uh, so annoying. Oh, and so they added, so this guy's comment, 300 morons, yeah, 370,000 morons, shows screen grab displaying subscribe to bucket button. So he's pointing out that I'm subscribed to... Uh, whatever the Australian douchebag is, scientific Dan guy. Yeah, I subscribe to the people who I'm going to debunk their videos just to save me the trouble of going to their channel to see if they made a new video. So your argument is that somehow 350,000 morons, so you're saying of the 370,000 people subscribed to Simon Dan, that something more than 1% of them are people who think he's an asshole? What, what is your average? What do you think the number is? How, how many thousand do you think are people who are subscribed for one purpose only? To point out how big an asshole the guy is and how shitty his videos are. <laughs> so how many people like it? So for me, it's, you, could, you could imagine that half my subscribers are just haters. It's a, it's a feasible... Uh, approximation, but it's not feasible in the case of Simon Dan, and you fucking know it. So it's just more bullshit. Oh, I got you on that one. 
Oh yeah, that's you really. I'm so defeated. Uh, I'll just have to hide in shame because you've so defeated my arguments. Uh, again, you people are just making this all the more heroic. You know, you just you're just going to make me even a bigger, you know, huge, gigantic, monstrous, greatest human who ever lived kind of thing. The very fact that you're this belligerent. This so full of shit, and I have to sit there and go through all of this shit to prove A, B, C. You know, you're just making me just so pff, incredible. <laughs> you know, I had to, at first I had to th rationally think, which apparently none, no, no human being has ever done in the history of mankind, um, and then I had to endure all of this crap from the reluctant little humans. Oh, anyway, and I do mean little. <sighs> okay, so no new comments. Good. <sighs> Video exchanges. You know, so that's another thing. I really don't, you know, Piro, I wouldn't, I, I have no real interest in having a live discussion because it would just deteriorate. So just make a response video. If you don't know how to make a response video, uh, oh, I've already done it. No, you really haven't responded to any of these points that have been made in these recent videos. You haven't even come close. I mean, if you want me to play one of your three or four or five or six-year-old descriptions of the double slit and we'll all laugh at it, that's fine. But obviously, the conversation is much more sophisticated now than it was then. And you're not going to get away with that cartoon. Anyway, um, oh. <laughs> I'll endeavor to persevere. That's all I can do. Pretty much. So, you know, struggle through this. I just imagine how far this would go if there was more people working on it. You know, I mean, the you know, getting more and more details. Getting you know, it's you know, none of that can happen until. All of this fake and phony resistance goes away. All these fake and phony naysayers and nitpickers and bullshitters. You know. It's, I, it's, again, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I did have an old contest for three thousand dollars. You know, just predicting who will be the first one to, to you know, um, concede the argument, and then Hoffa they had to go and kill himself and <laughs> ruin all the fun. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's, you're going to have to concede, okay? Eventually it's all going to happen, and you're going to look a lot better if you concede first than concede last. All right? The last ones to the party are going to look really fucking stupid. You know, the last one to the, uh, whatever, everything's free in the store sale, you know. You're just going to look really stupid showing up last. All right. Till next time and such. I'm going to own the future. All of it. I mean, you know, all of, all of it. <laughs> you know. I'm going to be everywhere. Giant statues as tall as mountains. <laughs>